Hi everybody, my name is DartPro, I'm a Sonic Adventure 2 Battle Speedrunner. Today we're going to have a little chat about Final Rush, specifically Fast Final Rush Skip. So those of you who follow my Twitter will know that around AGDQ, when I was there, um, I posted some weird tweets about some ridiculously fast Final Rush times and said that specifically it was not the Final Rush that people are, were, were familiar with. And this is mostly true. Anyway, so uh, at the time I had already had experience with some other tricks and releasing them sort of half developed and hoping that people would give them a try and learn how to do them better. Unfortunately that didn't really happen. Instead the tricks sort of got overlooked and people didn't want to do them anymore. And so that didn't go over so well. So I figured what I'd do is I'd keep this one under wraps until I could actually put out a finished trick that people could just do and it would work. Unfortunately progress is slow and the trick is actually a lot more complicated than it seemed at the time. So a couple of things have prompted me to actually come out and say, okay, this is what I found uh, right about now. So number one is that it has been slow, and I've more or less done all the checking that I wanted to do, and now it's sort of brute force into figuring out exactly how things work. So the easy stuff is out of the way, now it's just a matter of collecting data if I choose to pursue that. Number two is that a very talented Japanese runner and scientist named Ira found much the same thing. Uh, I believe the tweet was March 10th. And when that tweet came out, I thought, oh boy, cat's out of the bag. Now everyone's going to jump on this. And as it turned out, nobody jumped on it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and it worked out for me. Unfortunately, people have actually found it. And now they're, they've seen it and say, oh, this is how this works. So now I've sort of been pushed into putting the material out there. But that's okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show what I found at AGDQ and some of the information that I've dug up from my science over the past couple months on Final Rush. It's not entirely complete, so there's still some stuff I'm keeping myself with a knowledge that I don't really know whether it's true or not. I don't want to put it out there under the guise of being true and have people believe it and find out later, oh, that's actually not the way it works. So the only stuff I'll be discussing is stuff that I know works or works every time and stuff that I'm generally feeling confident that it's right. Stuff that I'm just guessing at, I'm going to keep to myself because, like I said, I do not want to give people the wrong impression about stuff that is of dubious truth. So we'll just roll with what's working. So first thing I'm going to show off is what I originally did at uh, AGDQ and the one that I tweeted out about five times in a row. So let's switch over to this scene and see what happens. These are pre-recorded, by the way. They're, such a, they're a pain in the ass to, to do on live conditions so I just avoided doing it and uh, so we're just gonna watch the recordings I did about 20 minutes ago so first off no this is not consistent final rush it's not consistent and without further investigation it won't be uh, but we'll give this one a look and we'll see how it's working so you can see my controller on the left you can see all the usual stuff the trick that I found was that you could literally jump off the rail, hold back, and jump straight out of bounds. And I did this on a lark, and I was like, oh, it works. And then I proceeded to do it four or five times in a row on my laptop right after that. And those were the tweets that I released showing the fast final rush times, but not the fast final rush technique. So the belief was originally that you had to do a gravity bounce through a hole in the kill planes, and if you hit it just right, you'll get out of bounds and get this trick. Well, this is a demonstration that you could jump straight out of bounds without the gravity bounce, i.e. proving that you don't need the gravity bounce to do the job. So this was a pretty big discovery at the time, and the fact that I got it like four or five times in a row, of course I was just squealing like a schoolgirl, like, oh baby, I found consistent final rush. Unfortunately, this was not the case. I don't exist. I still don't understand how that happened as many times in a row as it did, and it's still being worked on. Notice the time is 109.94. Well, we're going we're gonna to look at another variant of this that I found more recently. So this is this trick is very much the same, working along the same line, but in, but it uh, basically uses a bounce to get the fall speed fast. And this, as far as I can tell, is the fastest variant of fast final rush. The one you just saw is no faster or slower than the standard bounce final rush that everyone is familiar with seeing. This one is actually faster by about a second. It's going to be a little bit slower here because I had some fluff. But all I'm going to do is jump off, get rid of the gravity, bounce, and then hold back and get out of bounds. That's all it is. And there you see now it's just a fall to the end. Everything else about this is totally the same. It's just the timing is different. That's all it is. So like I said, as far as I can tell, this is the fastest variant of the fast final rush skip currently known. That doesn't exclude the possibility of others being found. Um, so yeah, you can see you just make it to the end, herpader, 
typical stuff here. Nothing too surprising. So uh, the time should come out to be a low 109, and that'll be part of the proof that this technique is fast, because the rest of the stage, as you saw, was done almost identically. And there you go, 9.45. Okay, so this one was pretty fluffy. I released a couple tweeted pictures, like not even a week ago, of myself doing uh, high 108s. You could improve it even faster. Notice that these don't even include IL strats other than just starting reasonably well. Uh, if you wanted to do the IL route, you could make the time substantially faster and potentially go steal the, the world record, for which I believe right now is a 107.3 by Zia. Again, another very talented runner. So, yeah, that, those are the two versions of the trick that I sort of stumbled across and have been sort of hiding under the table. So let's have a look as to why things sort of happen. So if I can get my model to pop up here, let's see if this works nicely. There we go. So this is Final Rush, the model. Unfortunately, you won't find these in stores. Maybe someday. So these red things that you see are death planes. And as you can see, it's a lot simpler than people think. These, This rail is the one that comes up from the, from the big purple thing. It's the one we jump off of. This is the purple platform with the two artificial chaoses, which is quite small in comparison to how this area sizes out. And this is the shortcut rail that goes down into the right. So this is a very basic model of what we're looking at. So you can see there are a lot of death planes around. The key ones are this one and this one. And then all the others sort of serve a secondary purpose. So the real key here is that if you go down to the right, you get past this corner of death planes between these two. That's all you need because they end. And then you can see this death plane is long and very tall and a little bit slanted. This is the one that we escape from. It's actually got sort of a fold in it. It's kind of weird. But uh, this is the one that we care about. This one right here. So you're probably asking, well, DARPRO, this isn't very helpful without seeing how you get out of bounds. Well, turns out we have a method for that. So I've taken 10 different paths, and I've mapped different portions of them, some of them more than others. Let's hide, uh, how many do I have? Let's do, let's hide the, the second five, because those ones are not as detailed. So these four are different paths of getting out of bounds. Let's talk about them one at a time here. This one, let's see which one that is. This first one is the variant that I did at AGDQ first, and that is you jump off, you fall down, hold back, and then just homing attack out of bounds, straight out. And you can see it goes straight through that death plane. There's no hole. It's just you get, you leave and the death plane fails because this game is good. These other ones, these are bounce type variations, the ones that you saw me do the second time. These are the faster ones, and these are faster for a reason we'll see here. This one is the bounce variation. You can see you do a very abrupt turn to the right, and then gravity sort of snaps. Now, the reason this one is so slow is you spend a good chunk of that falling sort of horizontally due to the gravity bounce. And at this point, you can't see it. I don't have it modeled. But you basically over top at the end. All you have to do is navigate the death planes and turn at the right time, and boom, you're at the end. You really don't have that far to go. So the key here is falling down as fast as possible. If you're doing a gravity bounce and you're falling sideways, you're not falling down. You're not getting closer to the end. Furthermore, if you're doing, if you're just falling normally, you're not getting the fastest down, down acceleration. The fastest way to do this is to jump off that rail, bounce straight down without gravity so that, so that you get the full bounce fall speed, and then get out of bounds and go straight to the end. The way bounce works is it sets your downward speed instantly to a... Um, to a certain value, I believe it's neg five. And then, so if you're falling at zero, it immediately sets it to neg five. If you're falling above neg five, you can get some weird effects, but we're not really talking about that here. So this is the reason this particular variant is faster. So there are some key conclusions here, really important ones. Number one, there's no hole in the death planes. There's not a magical spot that you aim for that you get out of bounds. It's, you get through the death plane, you are piercing it. I have some theories on how that works. I am developing evidence to support those theories. None of them have enough ground to stand on where I'm willing to say this is how it's working. We got some pretty good ideas, but they're not standing solidly enough to say, okay, this is what the cause is. But we have some ideas it's still being worked on. Secondly, 
is that the manner in which we get out of bounds can potentially help us figure out why this happens. So if I hide these paths, I'm going to activate a sketch which shows exactly the point that I get through the death plane. And this is how we show that there's no one particular hole. There's sort of a smattering of places that you get out of bounds. They're generally same, similar vertically, but there's no distinct pattern here. This can be helped with more data, and this is one of the things that I'm going to be working on. These green spots are how you are the spot that you happen to get out of bounds. So you've got one that's real low here. This is the one that you just fall out. This is the one at the top. This is the gravity bounce. The rest of these are all different versions that I happen to be doing, trying to get different samples. So the key here is that there's no one magical spot. The reason these are all clustered here is because I keep doing the same trick to get out of bounds, but you can get out of bounds all through here. There's no one spot. So really, this trick at this point is much, well, I would say almost entirely YOLO. So you give it a shot. There are some things you can do to help yourself make it more easily. Like, for example, I don't think you're going to get out of bounds way over here. I can't prove that, but I wouldn't go and try it in a run. So the, so the keys here are just not screwing up the trick somehow and giving it a chance to work. Like, for example, if you jump off the rail too quickly, you'll die on this death plane. This one doesn't fail. If you go too far to the left, or basically just not far enough to the right, when you're coming down here and jumping off this rail, you'll hit this death plane on the left. So you need to go out through this corner of the death planes. And then once you're behind that, and then this is the only thing behind you, you need that's, that's what you need to try to get through, because that's the one that's going to work. The rest of these, if you fall too far down, you'll hit this death plane, and that, that's not going to fail. This is a death plane that you need to avoid. There's another one down here that I don't have modeled because it's not really an issue, but when you see me turn at 48 or 49 seconds, that's the one down here is the one that I've gotten past. So if you stray way far to the right, though, you're going to die on this one. This one's about, about neg, neg 15,000 units, and this area here is about neg 9,000, neg 8,000. So you have some time, but not a whole lot. When you're falling, you run out of time real fast. Anyway, I just sort of wanted to point that out, and I also wanted to shout out Ira for investigating this. Um... Uh, he has done a good job of forcing me to basically release the information, so I suppose good on you. And uh, I hope people will take better notice of your tweets next time because they are freaking good. I'll probably include a link to Ira's Twitter and stuff down in the comment or down in the description because he's. If you're interested in science of this game, Ira is definitely a dude who you want to pay attention to. So yeah, that's basically just a discussion of Final Rush as it's currently understood. I stopped a little bit short of going to explain the theories because there's a whole bunch of them and they're not well investigated yet, but we're getting better information. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little discussion of Final Rush and the demo of the two variants you can do. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the science. So yep, my name is Dark Pro. Catch you later.